Welcome to The Real Board Loft. I'm Trip Foreman. We have Justin Quintal from Black Rose, a WSL World Longboard Champion with us. Justin, welcome. Thank you. And we are talking about a few of Justin's models while he's here. He's been staying with us at Waterman's Retreat. Uh, drove up here for a swell yep. and uh, scored during the middle of the summer. It's always uh, nice to have waves in July. Yeah, it's great. Pleasant surprise. The uh, And uh, right now we want to talk about one of Justin's longboard models, the Fine Swine. Uh, Justin, tell us a bit about this board and uh, you know just some background on it and what you've been using it for. Yeah, so we call it the Fine Swine because uh, it's a more of a pig style uh, single fin longboard. So the pigs, the wide points push back a little bit from center. Okay. That draws the, the rail line, you know, in towards the nose and out towards the tail and kind of gives it that piggy look. And what that does is it helps keep the rail engaged, especially in tighter pockets. And it helps the board hug the wave a little bit more. Okay. Um, some, some people aren't big on pigs, but uh, personally, I think that they're a really versatile longboard and they work really well for our conditions here on the East Coast. That wide point being pushed back and the rail line drawing in towards the nose, it also helps when you're turning your longboard, you don't catch a rail quite as easily, I feel like. Okay. And it's a little bit more forgiving at times, especially in critical situations. Um, but there's some nuance and it's definitely for maybe a more experienced surfer. But uh, once you hit that level where you want to keep progressing, it's a great board to gravitate towards. So like moving the wide point back in the board, uh, I mean, that's going to put, I mean, I don't know, let's stand one of these up. Let's stand the square tail up. Yep. So, I mean, you're, put, you're putting the wide point back in the board, you know, so rather than it being center around right. here, it's, it looks like it's what, more about here? Yeah, exactly. The wide point? And we're also able to make the nose a little bit narrower because you have more foam back here. Okay. So when your nose riding the water is coming over the tail and that's going to counterbalance your weight on the nose. So we can make the nose a little bit narrower, which is going to fit in a tighter pocket, but it's still going to be stable and hold well because we have enough width back here where okay. the water's flowing over. But then we really try to draw the tail in some here so that we're still able to, when we get on the back half of the board, put it on rail and have it be responsive and, and do those turns that we want to do. Um, these pigs also tend to um, trim really well and sit a little higher up on the wave. And I like really like the line that they Kind of naturally draw. What uh, about like what about like a uh, like a pivoting turn? Like by moving the wide point back, like do you, do you find that the board like pivots better off of like having that wide point further back? Or I would actually say that you can do more of a carve with the wide point being back. Okay. Where like uh, a nose rider that has more of a parallel outline, like the dark horse, we're, we're going to talk about in a little bit. That board's going to be more of a pivoty turn where this is gonna allow you to carve more. Okay. But since there is some width back here, you can do more of a pivoty turn. And we're also gonna talk about fins, and the fin has a lot to do with that as well. Um, depending on the fin that you put in there, it's gonna affect the types of turns m more likely that you're gonna do. So the Fine Swine uh, is the board that you use to win the world title, right? Right, so last year, like we were saying, um, you know, I couldn't travel with a bunch of boards, so. Mm -hmm. I try to think of the two boards in my quiver that are the most well-rounded and I could probably ride in just about anything from ankle high to well overhead. Cause you know, we're going to spots like Europe, Noosa, uh, Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Those places can break really different depending on how big it is and what the conditions are like. So we actually developed the fine swine pin because of that. I felt like the fine swine was a really well-rounded board, mm -hmm. but there were times when the waves got bigger where it didn't really need this square tail like it has back here. Right. So by putting a pintail on it, which it's still a relatively wide pintail, you can see, I still wanted it to be stable when I'm nose riding. And sometimes when you pin the tail out too much, uh, it can make the board a little bit tippy unless mm -hmm. you're really going fast or in a really good section. Right. So we kept the tail still relatively wide, but you know, more or less just took the, the ears off the square tail to lose that last little bit, that last little corner, just so that when you are hitting high speeds on a bigger wave, it's easier to keep that board engaged and you're not gonna slide out or, you know, hit a bump and or a chop and, you know, catch air, fly out. And, right, right. And when you're going faster, it's harder to turn the board. So losing that little bit of extra foam back there really made the board more responsive. Uh, once the waves got a little bit bigger. And this is the board that you used. Uh, did you use the pin in Taiwan, like in that pumping surf? I, I like did. In, the, in the, like the, final, the finals day? Yep. Uh, and what's funny is the catch-22 of this thing is that 
we found it works really well in smaller conditions yeah also because of having that pintail there's less drag so you're able to actually connect sections really well and really easily even in smaller surf so it's funny if the waves are really mushy and kind of flat it's also kind of my go-to board because it'll connect those sections really well okay um and then in that mid-range uh style surf i really like the fine swine with the square tail and then once it gets you know head higher overhead i kind of tend to prefer the pintail so and then if that one ever went down for some reason or another this one you could you know like what you're right, saying you have yeah. two boards to cover everything you could actually use this thing and everything if you had to exactly so between these two boards i felt really confident all year mm -hmm. and having that confidence i think was a huge part of you know ultimately winning the world title because i knew going to each place you know i'd been riding this board for a long time i knew it really well this was a new development off that board but i knew the other board so well that it really didn't feel that foreign and still felt really familiar. So looking at your boards, uh, the, I think the one thing that a lot of people notice, uh, you know, cause you're looking at a pretty traditional looking board like right. this. Uh, and then you, you put it under your arm. And the very first thing that you notice is like how thin, how thin they are, you know, like, or at least on the rails, like right. how much the rails are pulled down. Tell us about that a little bit. Yeah, so we really try to refine our boards as much as possible. Um, I would say in general, our boards typically are more, a little more foiled out and even a hair thinner along the rails, the tail, the nose, than a lot of uh, longboard brands that you're gonna uh, come across. Part of that is because growing up on the East Coast and surfing here so much, you know, I needed something that could respond quick as our waves tend to be faster than those in like Southern California or somewhere like that. Mm -hmm. So that's what I gravitated towards. And uh, I really like that. And I think it's one of the key factors in making our boards feel different and kind of stand out. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things that makes the difference in our boards. Another thing I try to do when I'm designing a board with Ricky is we talk about balance a lot, mm -hmm. balance in the outline, balance in the board in general. Just looking at the board, feeling the board, if there's something that feels like it's throwing the that outline or that design off balance, you're probably gonna feel that in the water. Right, you know? right. And you know, there are boards that are kind of novel and fun that are really extreme in one end or the other. But for me, I do like something that's gonna look good yep. and feel good. Yep. And um, I think that's one of the main things I try, or those are a couple of things I try to focus on when we're developing our boards, is just balance, looking good and feeling good. So both of these boards, you know, there's not too much nose concave, there is some, but not, not a ridiculous amount. There is some belly in here, especially back here towards the tail, mm -hmm. but it's not super bellied out. It's pretty flat through here. And there's a reason for all of that. You know, having a little bit of concave is gonna let that water flow through here when you're paddling into the wave and make it easier to, when you're entering the wave. Also, when your nose riding, it's gonna allow that board to keep going. Yep. But if you have too much concave, when you get in a critical section, it's gonna wanna slide out. So we blend this kind of subtle concave into more of a flat bottom through the center, which allows you to really accelerate. And then this last part where the fin is has a little bit of belly through here, and that kind of acts as the anchor for the board and really helps lock it in. Mm -hmm. If you hold a spoon to running water, if you run the sink, hold the belly side of a spoon to the water, it'll suck it to it. Yep, if you yep. flip it around, the water obviously just runs right off. So that's a really easy experiment to do at home to see the concept of how belly works. It acts kind of like a suction cup to the okay. wave. So I want to nose when I get in a section. Because there's a lot of belly back here. Right. So when I get in a section, I want to be able to nose ride. And sometimes, you know, you're hanging 10 and it's literally a barrel. Yeah. And you're racing the lip line, just trying to keep it from hitting, you know, the back of your legs. So you're racing in time and everything. And it's really similar to tube riding in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. But if you have a board that's going to slide out, then you're never going to make those sections. So mm -hmm. most of our boards have been developed to where in most situations, they're gonna respond pretty well. Certain boards in our in our line are gonna do certain things a little bit better. Right. But uh, all of them are pretty well rounded. So from a longboarder's perspective, you know whether it be the square tail or the pin tail, uh, and you know taking you know a lot of your other models uh, into account, like who's gonna like the fine swine? Like is it your like most popular board right now? And like kind of wh where do you see it selling to and who do you see liking it? Yeah, so <clears throat> it has been one of our top sellers this last year, <clears throat> especially with how much I was riding it uh, at all the events and it got a lot of camera time. 
and uh, a lot of people have really been liking it. I think if you're an entry level longboarder, you're probably not gonna gravitate towards this as much. I would recommend this for someone that has at least a little bit of experience riding a single fin longboard. Okay. Um, and you know, maybe someone who's knows how to cross up some, is, is starting to nose ride. You know, they're not trying to learn how to nose ride. Uh, yeah. Like maybe they've already hung 10 a few times and they've hung five and they kind of know what they're doing and they want to progress. Mm -hmm. This would be a great board for someone like that. Or for someone that is at expert level or getting to that point, you know, this is a great board for um, someone like that. And you can take, I would say you could take your longboarding just about as far as you want to go on, on this board. Okay. And then what about, uh, what about fins? Like we've talked about fins a little bit with this board. Like what are you riding? What are you riding on this, uh, on this board? Right. On so, the, so this board, swan. I'm riding a nine and a half inch apocalypse fin by true aims. Mm -hmm. And that fin is actually the same template, uh, as the, as the Yater that is featured in the cult classic apocalypse now. Mm -hmm. So that board in, the, in that famous scene where they fly in and they're getting shot at by Charlie and they uh -huh. surf and there's like bombs going off. Um, that board was a Yater and Rennie actually went to uh, Chuck Ames and he wanted to get a fin made uh, off that template and this was that fin. And my buddy Troy that works for True Ames had one and I saw it and I was like, I've been looking for something right. with that kind of outline. You know, it's wide enough where it's really going to hold well on the nose but there's a you know not so much fin up towards the tip to where it's going to be really hard to turn it's pretty upright but there's some curve to it it's just a really good blend of a lot of different things that i look for in a fin so like it's not necessarily a pivot fin yeah but yep. it has some of the traits of a pivot fin it's kind of got the general shape of like a greeno foray uh -huh. yeah it's not so thin that you know, when I get in a really critical section, it's gonna slide out or wanna get Yeah, give. it's got a lot more hold. And I really push, you know, through my turns, through my nose rides. I'm not a super light dude. Um, and I like to put some power into my surfing and I like to go fast and, you know, so I want something I can really push against and that I can trust. Right. And when I'm getting critical, whether it's getting tube, nose riding, doing a turn, trimming in a really steep section and holding that line so you can make it to the next one, you know, this has been a really good fin for me. I've been riding a 9.75, like I said, in, or actually only in a 9.5. For someone like me, that would typically be a really small fin. And for whatever reason, just the template of the fin's really well balanced, like we were, I was talking about earlier. It does a little bit of everything. And it's really got a good well. amount of area for the Exactly, for it's the got depth, a good amount you know? of surface area for how short it is, and like you said, the depth. Yeah, and then so that was the, uh, that was the apocalypse from Trey Ames, and then you were talking about a couple other fins that you also like. You were talking about the uh, the Tyler Warren pivot. Um, we got a pivot True Ames. Right. And then also a pivot uh, Captain Finn, and you're kind of recommending both of them. You tell us a little bit about, about the pivot. Yeah, so this is the Tyler Warren pivot fin, the 9.75 that True Ames makes. Um, I th believe they make a 10 inch uh, Tyler Warren fin as well. And this is similar to the Apocalypse. Mm -hmm. I was riding this a lot before I found the Apocalypse fin. And same deal, kind of same general shape as the Apocalypse, but I think this fin has a little bit more surface area. Okay. So it's maybe a hair stiffer than the Apocalypse, but depending on the board you're riding or the wave you're surfing, you might be looking for that. You know, if I was riding a wave where I'm mostly gonna be focused on tip time, uh -huh. I, I might switch it up to this. But still, all around, I think it's personal preference. This is a great fin. It does a little bit of everything really good. Right. Um, and either fin is gonna pair really well with, with these boards and with most boards, honestly. Right. Okay, awesome. Well, thank, thanks, Joseph, for, uh, for hanging out with us, talking with us about the fine swine. If you have any questions about the fine swine or you wanna put in an order for any Black Rose board, you can always give us a call at the shop, 252-987-6000, or look us up online, realwatersports.com forward slash surfing. Thanks for tuning in.